Hey everyone, and welcome back to another CodeHS Python tutorial. Today, we're diving into Challenge 4.0, Bubble Wrap 2.0. In this project, we're taking our bubble wrap simulation to the next level by adding some realism. We're going to enhance our canvas full of light blue bubbles by giving each one a subtle white highlight in the top right corner just like real bubble wrap reflects light. Let's walk through what you need to do. To start off, you've already been given starter code that fills the screen with rows and columns of light blue circles. That part is done for you. So, if you click the Run button, you will see that the viewing window is filled with 100 light blue circles, which is done by calling the draw circle, row, and move up a row functions. As in the prior lesson, the begin fill, color, shape, and end fill commands are used to color in the shapes, which are circles in this example. You'll also notice the function draw circle row uses a for loop to draw 10 light blue bubbles in a row. Then the move up a row function shifts Tracy up one row and resets her back to the beginning, ready to draw the next row of bubbles. This repeats 10 times to create a 10 by 10 grid of bubbles. So we're already simulating the texture of bubble wrap. Now it's time to make it look more three-dimensional. Turning now to the crux of the assignment, you are being asked to add a highlight to each bubble to make it pop. To do this, we'll create a new function called make highlight and place that function between the draw circle row function and the move up a row function in the starter code that has already been provided to you. At the end of the code, we will also need to add a for loop for the highlights, which will be similar to for loop that creates the bubbles. Now turning to the make highlight function. This function will draw a white quarter circle on the top right of each bubble. Let's break down what's happening inside the make highlight function. First, Tracy moves forward slightly, just enough to position herself near the top right of the bubble. Then she turns up, moves forward, and uses the circle function to draw a 90 degree arc, which becomes our highlight. Then Tracy lifts her pen using the pen up command and then moves into position for the next bubble and repeats the process. All of this happens inside a loop that runs 10 times once for each bubble in the row. Once a row of highlights is done, we reuse the same move up a row function to go up one level and reset for the next row. This is a great example of reusing functions to avoid repeating code. Instead of writing the same commands over and over, we're using loops and modular functions to handle repetitive tasks. There's one last trick before the final step. After we finish drawing all the bubbles, we need to reset Tracy back to the bottom left corner before we begin drawing highlights. That's done by rotating her to face up, moving forward 400 pixels, and rotating back to the original direction. Once that's done, we change the pen color to white so our highlight arcs stand out, and we begin calling our make highlight function row by row. When you run your program, you'll see that each light blue bubble now has a soft white arc in the top right, making them look like they're catching light. This simple effect goes a long way in making the design feel more polished and believable. Let's review what you learned in this challenge. You used loops to repeat drawing patterns. You wrote a custom function to add highlights. 
You reused existing code like move up a row to avoid redundancy. You practiced positioning, angles, and drawing arcs with the circle function. Awesome work. Once your code is working correctly, be sure to click check code and then submit your work. If you want to take it a step further, try experimenting with different highlight sizes or even adding shadows for an extra 3D effect. Don't forget to like the video, share it with a classmate, and subscribe for more Code HS walkthroughs. Keep coding, and I'll see you in the next lesson.